Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, today I stand in this house to speak to every woman, every child, every victim and survivor of gender-based violence. I'm sure the whole house will join me in condemning the spate of violent attacks against our women and our children. Mr. Speaker, while we acknowledge the decline in the number of children and women killed this year over last year, we remain concerned about the acts of violence being committed in our country. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mr. Speaker, let's look at some cases of violence against women and children. One, the burnt body of 14-year-old Yatana Francis was found by residents in an open lot in her South St. Andrew community by residents. Residents reported hearing shouts of rape and cries for help coming from the open lot, but said that the shouts quickly ended. Two, the skeletal remains of 13-year-old Shanoa Ray was found in a bathtub in Mona after she went missing on July 16. Three, Alicia Francis and her two sons, aged six and 12, were chopped several times by her ex-boyfriend in St. Anne in August of this year. Francis and her younger son were pronounced dead at hospital. Four, 45-year-old Dion Smith was stabbed multiple times in a jealous rage while her 16-year-old J. Chanel Gordon's throat was slashed as she slept. Her common-law husband killed himself by driving into the rear cobra. Five, 43-year-old Marley Russell Knight was beaten to death with a pickaxe. The accused, her husband, allegedly tried to take his own life by drinking a poisonous substance. Six, in January, Simone Collimore and a taxi driver were shot to death in Kingston. The accused, Simone Collimore's husband, and he was charged with murder and conspiracy for killing of his wife and her cab driver. The seventh incident, 24-year-old Rosalie Campbell succumbed to injuries received when her ex-lover torched her home in Mocha. In this incident, her 16-year-old brother died and her 53-year-old mother remains seriously injured. Mr. Speaker, these attacks have been heartless, callous, horrific, and brutal, and are causing many of our women and children to worry. This is understandable, but we must not cower in fear, Mr. Speaker. We must expose the brutes, help the security forces to find them, and provide the evidence for the courts to put them away. I share the grief of the families as we all wish for speedy investigations and successful prosecutions. Mr. Speaker, I'm also leading my team in the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport to find solutions and to end the violence. I will not be silent. I will raise my voice in this house and elsewhere. I will denounce every act of violence. I will do all that is in my power to help prevent the violence. In this house, we all must do what we can to protect victims of violence and ensure that the perpetrators are punished and that the victims get redress. Yeah, yeah. Tackling violence in our country, particularly against our women and our children, those who are the most vulnerable among us requires the participation of everyone. I keep saying that 
we can end the violence, but it requires all of us to end the violence. This is a message that requires constant repetition. As the writer Zadie Smith said, and I quote, progress is never permanent. It must be redoubled, restated, and reimagined if it is to survive. And so the violent attacks over the last few weeks, Mr. Speaker, must serve to remind us all that we simply cannot be complacent. We all must restate our commitment to eliminating violence against women and children, and redouble our efforts to making this a safer world for all of us. Mr. Speaker, government has a critical role to play to prevent and to end violence against women and children. In my ministry, we have been doing what we can to tackle this issue as part of the whole of government approach to these horrendous crimes. Through the Bureau of Gender Affairs, we have developed and championed the National Strategic Action Plan for the elimination of gender-based violence. We have begun to implement this 10-year plan that presents an action-focused approach across all of government to eliminate all gender-based violence. This year, Mr. Speaker, the national activities to mark the International Day for the Elimination of Violence against Women on November 25 will target key stakeholders towards the implementation of the National Strategic Action Plan for the Elimination of Gender-Based Violence. We will use this observance to undertake significant outreach activities in communities that are associated with high levels of violence. Mr. Speaker, we have been clear that we need stronger laws to deal with gender-based violence, particularly sexual offenses. For this reason, we reconvened the Joint Select Committee under the chairmanship of Minister Chuck to review laws relating to violence against women, violence against children, the elderly, and persons living with disabilities. We heard submissions from various quarters, and we have given earnest consideration to all the arguments. Our report and recommendations will be laid before this House in short order. It, in fact, will be laid in this House before the end of the month. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very good. Mr. Speaker, we are also finalizing proposals for the Prevention of Sexual Harassment Bill, which will be brought to the House very soon. Sexual harassment is not a simple matter. It is a very serious crime that militates against the desired level of peace, harmony, and happiness in our country. And I look forward to our debate in this House and to us providing protection to all women and men as well for unwanted sexual advances, requests for sexual favors, and crude sexual behaviors that affect the quality of life by creating an intimidating, hostile, or offensive environment. But Mr. Speaker, the laws will only be deterrents if people believe that they will be enforced. People who like to abuse women and children will think again if they know that they will be caught and punished. In my view, Mr. Speaker, successful prosecutions will not only depend on investigators and the justice system, success is also dependent on our people taking a stand and using the mechanisms we put in to deal with the problem. Yeah, yeah. It is one thing for us to have harsh penalties yeah. for gender violence, but to punish the perpetrators, we need convictions, and that requires people speaking up. The JCF statistics up to late October show that 38 children were the victim of violent deaths, 10 fewer than the corresponding time last year, or a 21% decline. The police report that 20 of the 38 cases have been cleared up 
a clear rate of 53%. But we must continue on this path. And the only way we can continue on this path is to ensure that we work together to eliminate acts of violence and abuse. In remaining true to our commitment to the care and protection of our children, Mr. Speaker, the number of child abuse cases that have not been investigated have moved from 5,000 to only 400. Excellent. Critical to this is how we have removed the bureaucracy by the merger of the Child Development Agency and the Office of the Children's Registry to create the Child Protection and Family Services Agency. Joined up government. Mr. Speaker, I believe the message, the message that should be sent from this Honorable House today is that each of us has a part to play in ending gender-based violence. Each of us in this House and every single Jamaican. We cannot remain silent. We cannot afford to look the other way. We have a duty as family neighbor, friend, and co-worker to intervene, to call in the authorities, to give evidence in the court, and to help make Jamaica a land of peace, love, and harmony. Earlier this year, Mr. Speaker, the most honorable prime minister asked the country on International Women's Day to be unyielding in how we deal with violence against our women and our children. Mr. Speaker, we have been doing the work. We are committed to ensuring that all Jamaicans equally enjoying socially valued goods. We are the administration that continues to seek institutional responses for gender-based violence because we understand that until we really unravel this problem of violence against our women, children and vulnerable groups, the shared prosperity that we are building for all Jamaicans is at risk. Mr. Speaker, we are advancing the establishment of the first state-run national shelter to assist women who need to leave abusive environments. In the last few months, we completed acquisition of the property and we are transforming it into a center to accommodate survivors of gender-based violence and their children. It will also offer basic necessities, counseling and other forms of support. Mr. Speaker, please allow me to acknowledge all those who have graciously donated furniture and other items towards the establishment of the National Shelter. We continue to raise awareness of violence against women and children and its impact in various ways, including the use of the media. The media has an important role to play. We are currently developing the No Excuse for Abuse public education campaign with the support of UN Women. In September this year, we entered a three-year memorandum of understanding with the UN Women Multi-Country Office of the Caribbean for the implementation of the National Strategic Plan to Eliminate Gender-Based Violence. Mr. Speaker, included in this MOU is the funding of the No Excuse for Abuse campaign. The No Excuse for Abuse campaign will take the anti-violence message to communities across the country. We will empower women and men confront all notions about a woman's place and encourage behavior change among women and men. We are grateful to the many partners, local and international, who continue to give support to our various initiatives to end gender-based violence. We are indeed proud of the achievement of two women human rights advocates, Oberlin Smith-White and Novlet Grant, who were recognized on Heroes Day for their unparalleled service to the country. Ms. Grant still continues to help in the reduction of violence against women 
though on retirement, as she recently started an advocacy group titled Enough is Enough to address community-based violence on the ground. Groups such as Enough is Enough will be important in the implementation of the National Strategic Action Plan to eliminate gender-based violence. I'm hereby asking more men and more women to join us because the impact of domestic violence is even felt by those who are not immediately in contact with it. Domestic violence is not a private matter, Mr. Speaker. Colleagues, domestic violence is not a private matter. It involves all of us, and no one is immune to this scourge. But, Mr. Speaker, I'm compelled to call for a greater partnership with our men. Those in this chamber, those in this chamber who are speaking, and those in this chamber who are listening, and to the wider society, men are the main perpetrators of the violence, and men have to acknowledge their responsibility for the violence. Men have an important and unique role to play in fixing things. The conduct, behavior, and attitudes of men must change yes. if we are to end sexual harassment and abuse of women and children everywhere. Men need to stand up to end violence against women, children, and other men. The violence is not inevitable. We can end the violence. We must end the violence, Mr. Speaker. Let us stand up against violence. Let us stand up for justice, brotherhood, sisterhood, peace, and prosperity. In closing, I extend condolences to the friends, families, communities, and networks of all those who have been affected by the brutal and senseless acts of these callous and weak individuals. I endorse the statement by the Most Honorable Prime Minister that these individuals have no place in Jamaica, the Jamaica that we are trying to create. I now turn my attention to my brothers and sisters in communities across Jamaica. I wish to challenge you to speak up and speak out. I want to say to the men in the communities across Jamaica, particularly in the inner city, don't think that you must beat your woman or your child. You must stop it. And I want to say to the woman too, don't go scratch up your man and try to beat him up because you see him with a woman. You must stop it too. I implore you to make use of the various associations as a means of working collectively to tackle family violence and other issues relating to gender-based violence. This is critical to restoring social order and engendering respect for life. This is all about mutual respect. This is all about caring for each other. And this is all about trying to work it out together without becoming violent. You have my commitment, Mr. Speaker. Jamaica has my commitment as your Minister of Gender Affairs to continue working at the interministerial level to do my part in my personal space, as well as with the strength of my team to tackle head on the monster of gender-based violence. To the women who are still in these toxic relationships, I understand that it is complex, but for your safety, you must walk away. And to our neighbors, you must not turn and look the other way. You too have a responsibility. Yeah, yeah. Enough is enough. There is no excuse, Mr. Speaker, for abuse. And at this time, I commend this statement to the House, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. <laughs>